So let's start with this opening intro section that we'll also use for the first phrase of the first verse. It goes like this. Now what I have here is a hammer on of my first finger onto the fifth string second fret. Notice that I already have fingers three and four in place on the first two strings. Finger three is on the second string third fret. Finger four is on the first string third fret. This is part of our G add five chord, but we don't need the sixth string, so I'm just hammering into that fifth string second fret. Uh, down with the picking hand, the thumb will hit that fifth string for me. And then these three fingers will pluck the first three strings. Also, notice I'm keeping the fingers real low like this, not like this. This is more of a classical style. This is more of a John Mayer, Mark Knopfler style. It allows me to treat these three fingers almost like the right hand chord of a piano, and this becomes my left hand bass section. So we have that fifth open, hammering on, then I pinch the three strings together with these three fingers, and then I bring the fingers back onto strings five, three, two, and one, and I get that little click. And that's where we get that percussive feeling going on with this style. We get that little slap and knock in there. So we do that. Then after this, I'm going to go to the C add nine chord. And of course, that's finger two on string five, fret three. Finger one, you're on string four, fret two. I still have my two small fingers on the first two strings, third fret. Picking hand, we'll pinch five, three, two, and one together, and then we'll bring our hand back to re-engage the strings. Also notice how far in front of my fingers this thumb is in the picking hand. The reason I'm doing this is I want to strike with this part of the thumb here, not with here, like we typically do, but right here. And it gives it a more percussive sound, more bouncy. Whereas if I were to do this, see here more in the nail. I want a nice, warm, bouncy sound. And the way to do that is to strike it right here and notice I'm keeping that thumb very, very straight. It's not curved, it's like that. And it sticks out way in front of the, the chord section of fingers. So we have this. There's our C add nine, and I want that click again as I re-engage the strings. Then our next chord is the E minor seven, and for this, I'm still keeping these two fingers down here. Finger one, I'm going to aim you for the fifth string. If you get the fourth, that's fine. We won't be hitting either one of these strings, but I do need them at least deadened so that when I get hitting on this guitar, I don't get open strings playing that I don't want. This chord, though, will start with the sixth string with the thumb, and then I'll do that three note pinch with the three fingers separately, and then another dead stroke. So we have this so far. The next chord is just a regular D chord. So that's third string second, first string second, second string third. Down here with my picking hand, I will pinch the fourth, third, second, and first strings together. And then a dead stroke. So we have this now. Then for the second half of the phrase, we do almost exactly the same thing, except for the D chord at the end. We swap it out. Here's the second half of this phrase. So you can see the second time, instead of going to the D chord, I'm going to this. And this is still a D chord, it's just revoiced. Um, because we were on the E minor seven, I wanna keep the little finger on string one, slide it up to the fifth fret. Finger two, you are now on the fourth string, fourth fret. Finger one, you're on the second string, third fret. With your picking hand, you're going to pinch the fourth, second, and first strings. I won't let the index finger play. I don't want to hear its third string. I don't want to lose my technique, though. I don't want to change to these two fingers because my hand will move. I want to try to keep these three fingers on strings one, two, and three as much as I can because that'll allow me to keep this nice rhythm going on without having to worry about losing uh, my position. So for this pinch, I'm going to be leaving out the index finger so that I can pinch four, two, and one. 
This is a D chord. I would call it a D chord with an F sharp in the bass, simply because the lowest note in the chord is an F sharp, and that's right here. And that's the entire opening phrase that we'll use for the intro and for part of the verse. Here it is again. And the singing comes in, and we do it again. Now, let's take a look at the next phrase. 